Welcome, Bruce and Ed, live from New York. I'm Bruce. And I'm Ed. And we're we happy to see you here. Live today. from New York. <laughs> yeah. Today's, Good morning. Today's show, uh, today's special guest is, uh, tell, give us a little intro. Well, he's a multi-talented musician and creative artist, and his name is Steve Isaacs, and you probably know him from TV and from music. And uh, he's with us this morning. Welcome. Hey, Steve. Hey, Cheers. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Looking all bright and ready to go. <laughs> bright and bushy Freshly tailed. showered. <laughs> uh, I'm beginning the caffeine ritual right here. Yes, we are too. We've Great. Got, we've all Hawaii. Got it. I heard. Cheers. Yeah, I saw in your blog you just got back from Hawaii. And you've been daydreaming every day since, right? Come on, I want to know you. I'm trying to keep the aloha thing going in the big city if I can at all, because <laughs> uh, it really seemed to help out the old uh, noodle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, so man. it's kind of hard to come back because I really, really love it out there. Yeah. That should be an obligation, everybody. I think it should be a law. Every six weeks, you have to take one week in, uh, in you know, Hawaii, one of the islands. <laughs> any kind of island, any kind of beach place, and you know where you don't have to wear real shoes. Yes. And, uh, you know you, you don't have uh, full length pants. It has right. to be some like, short type pants. Totally. It's, and Manhattan doesn't count as an island or city no. island. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you you gotta run away from here sometimes to get that. <laughs> they sh- they should do that. They should put a little like down there. You know, they should put a little beach and some you know palm trees and make a little tropical island beach right here on Manhattan. <laughs> Beach over there in Brooklyn, but it seems like that's just a real great place to catch uh, some uh, hepatitis as yeah. opposed to some rays. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, it's a nice idea. I don't want to rip on them, but it's you know it's a little hectic. Have you guys uh, been out there? No, where? No, that you're what talking about where they have concerts and music, all kinds of stuff. They got concerts. They got a big. They, they import sand. If you just look across the East River, you can see it. It's right there. Just um, uh, I think it's it's just it's kind of around uh, between Greenpoint and Williamsburg. I think. Hey, honey. Williamsburg. Sorry. That's yeah. okay. I'll find out where it is. But What's it they called? They have a, a, a volleyball stretch. It's Long Island City. Oh, uh, Long Island City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, where, that's where Costco is. Yeah, that's where <laughs> our, our know, Costco people are. We know. Oh, Costco. the beach at Costco. You're talking about the Costco ferry. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You have, like, beer and barbecues, and you go out there and just uh, can, you know, put yeah. your feet in the sand, and it's it's kind of nice, but it's Pretend. still, little, you know, just this side of getting happy. If you if you put a blanket down, lay in the sun, and close your eyes, you can almost be at the beach. <laughs> almost <laughs> until you hear the sirens. Yeah, that's so that's funny. So, you how long were you in Hawaii? Was out there for uh, seven days, oh. and then spent uh, two days in Los Angeles, which is pretty much where I'm, I'm from. Oh. So I got to go out and see my friends, nice. do a little bit of business, and then uh, me and the fiance went out to Oahu for seven days. We hiked around and and. Uh, jumped off cliffs and kayaks the little islands off the coast it's just i really underestimated how cool oahu is because uh, yeah. it tends to get um it tends to get disrespected for yeah. having uh honolulu and waikiki which are really kind of you know metropolitan uh cities right uh, and so uh but it's really really beautiful there's so much to do on the island yeah and, uh, there really is people get, always like, kind of some geeky looking for lost locations mm. uh, which was kind of fun yeah that's cool that's cool the cast <laughs> yeah, is yeah, there nice. well that's over now but right but they they were yeah. they were often seen there of course that yeah they, they, they filmed almost the whole show there uh, yeah. apparently even though yeah. that the show all the flashbacks that happened in the show happen all over the world in right. the, you know, Korea and Los Angeles and all over the world uh, Saudi Arabia uh, everything was actually filmed on Oahu cause it's so they really had to reproduce Korea in Oahu What's that? They had to reproduce Korea in Oahu? Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. They found places that actually look... Because on a Oahu, on a, uh, in Hawaii, it actually has every climate on Earth wow. in those islands, which is amazing. kind of amazing. There's yeah. desert, there's uh, 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 snow, there's obviously jungle, tropical. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, that's amazing. And people always say, you know, tourists always talk about, you know, Maui and all the other islands and how beautiful they are. But you're right that... Um, 
Oahu can if you get outside of the city, it's just as beautiful. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rainy side, right? The other side where it gets all the rain that hits, you know, one side it's much more green and lush and. Mm-hmm. Right? And the North Shore with all the surfers and with that whole kind of culture, it's really undeveloped. It's still very country. We spent most of our time up there. It's really yeah. fun. But I love Maui too. I've spent a lot of time in Maui. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I found a nude beach sort of in Oahu. There's really? this place, yeah, yeah, I, I, I found it from some guidebook, and you have to go up this, like, main road, it's like right right up from Waikiki, you just go up the hill, up the mountain, and then there's this one spot, and it identifies it in the book, there's a, there's a, some kind of a, you know, sign, no parking sign or whatever, and, and 300 yards past that, it's like a treasure hunt, and then there's a, <laughs> then there's a sign right there that says, danger, do not enter, dangerous rocks falling, something like that, and it says, go right past that, <laughs> and then, climb down the trail and it was exactly right it's like you go down this trail and it's like all these trails going right down to this totally exclude you know exclusive beach that nobody knows about it's like you know 10 feet deep and uh i mean wide the beach or deep i guess anyway uh mm-hmm. and it's like they're all laying out nude it's crazy yep. <laughs> right we, we found one of those in, in maui it's the same kind of situation you go to the main beach and then there's like some rocks you have to climb up and then you look over, and boom! There it is. Hundreds of naked people. <laughs> we, we climb down this little rock. Not a big climb, but just we have to, you know, uh, walk down these little rocks. And the first thing we see when we look left is about a 70-year-old naked Hawaiian guy with long <laughs> white hair uh, on a surfboard surfing a wave into the beach. Mm, a, nice. A, a visual that I will never easily <laughs> be able to erase from my mind. I hope you already had your uh, McMuffin for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mc, McGriddle, McGriddle, I saw that on your so <laughs> you're famous now with your McGriddle. Yeah, what? By the way, what else are you famous for besides the McGriddle? <laughs> uh, not much. Uh, no. not much. I've done a bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm, 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 uh, fame isn't one of the things. I'm known for. <laughs> no, but you you were um, Ed was telling me that you were what, MTV. You were in an MTV VJ. Yeah, uh, MTV is uh, a cable channel. Really? <laughs> that, that plays, uh, that used to play music. Used right. to. They got the M in their logo, and a lot of people don't know that, but it's true. It used to play music, and uh, that was a really long time ago, and that's when uh, I, uh, I worked on there, and I introduced videos, and I hosted the Top 20 Countdown, and uh, uh, hanging with MTV, uh, Daily Root Awakening, there's about like five different shows I did. But Are you yeah. serious? People really don't fun know that. for a young dude that just got moved out from L.A. Oh, and yeah. Uh, to come to New York. Yeah, you're, you're I, I remember I remember seeing you. Uh, this was in the 90s? or Yep, early 90s. Early, it was early like 90s, the yeah. time, and I was like long hair, wearing shorts on the air, and wearing Doc Martin, Martin boots. That was, that was kind of my game. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing you. I Because I remember the name when, when Bruce... Uh, well, you and Bruce know each other from Twitter... And he mentioned your name once, and I was like, that name sounds really familiar. <laughs> but yeah, I remember you. I think you did great. So are you serious or are you joking that some people don't know MTV comes from music television? <laughs> I'm joking, but I mean, when you think about it... Uh, some, yeah, 20-somethings don't know. I mean, yeah, and like, and, I mean, like the kids today. Yeah. But like, you know, really, if you're... If there's, the kids today. kind of shot for this, you know, kind of like uh, late teens audience. Kind of like, really, it's like when you're in a, that kind of post pubescent mm-hmm. haze of hormones that's yeah. who they're really focusing on <laughs> it's, it's a really high turnover audience mm-hmm. and so their programming i think sadly ref- reflects this really kind of uh it's almost like uh, uh trying to exploit uh the hormonal craziness that everyone mm-hmm. has as they're growing up yeah and uh, i think they've done a lot of good programming but largely they just they don't it's it's some of the worst stuff on tv what is it i haven't even watched mtv for so so long because we don't you know, watch oh. Jersey Shore. Now that was good. I yeah, love that was MTV. That. Yeah, that was that. good. Oh, <laughs> we don't watch. We only watch television through internet. It's really bad. We don't have. We canceled our cable service completely. We right. only watch TV through internet. You know, using Boxy and Put IO and all that stuff. So we we don't have. Um, you know, we don't have any of those cable channels. But I still see the best shows. Like we, we can watch Jersey Shore whenever we want. But but I never actually tune into MTV itself. I I don't know the last. Last thing I remember on MTV, besides you know, after the music videos were over, was um, the Real People or something. Real those reality shows. Real world. Real, real world. world. That's Stop it. Stop being polite and things start getting real. <laughs> 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 Not 
Not yeah, because really. real people aren't polite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, but, you know, that was really that was the seed, that was the first reality show seed that was planted anywhere yeah. in uh, popular media, and that was actually like right when I was leaving MTV. Right when I was at M- MTV was the first season of Real World, mm. and, and boom, this whole you know. Reality. reality television now that's that's where it all came from so right. what's on MTV today is it thank god I don't really know it's it's largely uh, reality shows about 16 year old pregnant girls oh. um, and pretty much that kind of ilk uh, sounds like, it, it really bugs the hell out of me when I turn it on sounds and like Jerry they Springer and E! Entertainment Television are really scraping the bottom of the bottom of the barrel wow <laughs> it sounds like uh, Jerry Springer the Jerry Springer Network <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty yeah. much Crazy. And but your real passion is music, uh, obviously. But uh, performing it, right? Uh, it was. I'm kind of a. I'm kind of retired from music. Uh, I put out an album with the guys from Jane's Addiction uh, with an album called uh, The Panic Channel on Capitol about three years ago. But um, right after we toured, and uh, it looked like they wanted to go back to Jane's Addiction, and I met a, a girl out here. I met a. Uh, a beautiful uh, bottle service waitress at Marquis, uh, of all places, on tour, and mm-hmm. we fell in love. And I decided to move from Los Angeles to LA. And so since then, I've just been focusing on my uh, my internet creative direction and internet marketing, advertising, digital, mm-hmm. interactive stuff, cool. which is kind of my other like twin love. You mean so like social media marketing, like as a, like consulting with people who want to market themselves through. Uh, pretty much. I, I worked for three years at a company called Deep Focus, where I was creative director, and we did all of the HBO marketing mm-hmm. and all of the, uh, uh, do you like Mad Men on AMC? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the, the some much. of the work you did with them. That's great. Yeah, so like, you know, my, my gig was uh, to have a, a new movie or a TV show or a product or a brand and to come up with any kind of interactive social media, uh, any kind of digital execution, any kind of fun thing that I could come up with. Mm-hmm. And so that's uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now, freelance. So I bounce around to different companies. They have some kind of idea, TV show, brand, promotion, and then I come up with ideas. So mm. I'm kind of a digital idea guy. Cool. Very cool. I did that. Uh, what is it called again? Um, something Me. Um, what's the show called again? Mad Men? Yeah, Mad Men. There, Mad Men Yourself. Mad like, Men not? Yourself? Yeah, I did that. Mad I made yeah, a little... That was, I made, that, was my, that was my idea. Yeah, I made a little uh, caricature of myself. That was fun. That like that, yeah. really well. We got tons <laughs> of coverage on that. That, was, that went, went really well. Because that makes a company happy when mm-hmm. millions of people are doing this one thing. Yeah. They don't have to spend any money buying advertisements yeah. for it. They yep. love that. It's like a vi- like a video that goes viral. It could be a little applet like that that goes viral that everybody wants to go and try. Very cool. And every client is trying to get that catch that lightning in a bottle. And there's no way to do it. You just yeah. have to Luck. give it your best best shot. And do yeah. a bunch of research and go with something that you that you think you'd like to uh, mm-hmm. enjoy. And, and then it, hopefully people grab onto it. Yeah, you have to be creative. Come up with great ideas. Then you have to be able to I don't know maybe make a prototype and like do you try it out on people and see what which ones people go. Oh, that's cool. Um, no, because that would that would be uh, that would sink a bunch of money and time. You yeah. really just have enough time to build the thing. You have to actually build it. Best thinking, and then push it out there. Yeah, because if you're going to build it and to try it on people, you may as well just build it and put it out there, and see which yeah, one. Yeah, unless you're like Coca-Cola or some gigantic brand, and you can like you know, you know, bring it a bunch of kids off the street, yeah. focus group them like guinea pigs. Yeah. I mean, they've got money forever yeah. so I'm sure they do stuff like that with really big executions yeah. but for a show like Mad Men which a lot of people like and a lot of people in you know a certain like the New York demographic mm-hmm. and a lot of professional people and digital people love Mad Men they only get about like 1.2 1.7 million viewers a week maybe mm-hmm. in the twos for a season premiere or finale it's mm-hmm. not a big viewership to the right. show but it's really influential in a specific demographic that's really prized by advertisers. Right. That's cool. That's cool. Plus it rules. It's just a good damn show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what? You're saying it's like a higher income demographic or just a higher income? More, income, more, uh, more college educated. They gotcha. spend more money and they uh, they have a lot of, you know, these are the people that like Mercedes Benz wants to put their ads to. You know, mm-hmm. Mercedes Benz is right. going to put an advertisement on 16 and pregnant on MTV because <laughs> it's not a good idea. No. But on Mad Men, those people that are watching that show, that's that that's that group that would buy that car. Right. Um, right. Yeah, exactly. So you can have a smaller audience but a much more prestigious demographic. 
yeah, yeah. a much more valuable audience to certain mm -hmm. uh, brands have that have a lot of cash, frankly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Cool. And, and what are your thoughts like on Twitter? I mean, because I know Bruce is all over Twitter, and it seems like you are too. Yeah, I see you tweeting a lot. <laughs> Twitter's over. Twitter's yesterday. What is your take on it? <laughs> uh, no, I love it. I actually warmed up to it, uh, in my opinion, late because I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm really an early adopter with technological products, with social media stuff, with basically anything. I give it a really healthy shot right at the beginning and get into it, and. Um, Twitter, I got into right away, and it just felt really clumsy. I didn't mm -hmm. like how cryptic the tweets were with the hashtags and with replies, and I didn't think they really set up the service that great, and I, I thought they were pretty lucky in the beginning that it didn't capsize. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big fr fan of FriendFeed when it came out. I thought yeah. it was elegant, thought it was clear, and I really liked the community there, so I, I, I was a big fan of FriendFeed. But Twitter, it just, it was, it was undeniable. Like, once they figured out their... Uh, their server problems and their mm -hmm. their uptime. Uh, it became something that just there's such a, a, a broad range of people yeah. communicating that anybody can jump in and get into a uh, not a conversation because Twitter sucks for conversation, mm -hmm. but they could get into a, uh, a, a not a dialogue, but they a could connection. get into the experience with any type of person that <coughs> they might enjoy yeah. uh, reaching out to. Yeah. So I think Twitter is, is it's still the uh, the golden child of yeah. social media uh, mm -hmm. that. You know that and Facebook, they serve totally different, uh, very different masters, purposes. Really. Yeah, right. But, um, I, but uh, yeah, I love Twitter. I get a lot, an awful lot out of it. I think that um, the similar. I mean, I think Twitter has kind of succeeded in spite of itself, in spite of its yeah. like thoughtless design. It, it, they, I mean, they kind of know that they didn't want to change much because they didn't want to jinx it. They were on our. They are on a success ride that hasn't stopped. And so, in a way, it's kind of smart. They didn't want to screw with it because so many companies, they, they make one, they keep trying to improve it until it goes right into the grave. But they just did nothing, basically did nothing to it at all and just let it grow and grow and grow and grow. And that, it's, it's the form factor has, I think, is what's caused it to succeed because just the simple fact that it's short and that everybody can join it and that it interacts with everything else. So, and like you said, they have diff completely different purposes than other things. So. The, the trick to s Twitter, I think, is, like you said, it kind of sucks for conversation, but it's great for making connections. Mm -hmm. So I think of it as a broadcasting tool. Well, it's dual purposes. One is a broadcasting tool, and the other, actually three, three huge services. One is broadcasting, two is reading, like a, almost like reading a, like an RSS reader. So there's, there's those 10 people that you really care about what they're saying. You can follow those 10 people. So that's my secret. I have two Twitter accounts. Use one for posting, you know, profound thoughts or whatever, and then use the other one for reading because you can't read 10,000 people. You can only read 10. So I follow like 10 people on one, and I have on the other one I have like 11,000 people who follow what I say. So I use two different accounts. And then the third thing that people mo the most often neglected and probably the most powerful part of Twitter is the search. I use Twitter search. I use Twitter search as much as I use Google search. It's that powerful. So a lot of things you can't find on, on Google, you're going to find blog articles, news articles. But on Twitter search, you find people who are, like, I want to know about this particular software. And maybe in conjunction with this particular hardware, I can do a, a Twitter search on that, and I can find people who are using it right now. And yeah, I can much start, more immediate. Yeah, and I can start a conversation. You can start a conversation with an at reply or two and then take it offline to email and then have a, or phone or whatever, Skype, and, t and have a real conversation. And so I connect to people in very, very specific genres, people who are using this software on that computer or whatever, and for this purpose or that, you know, like the accessibility community, um, you know, people who are using Ubuntu Linux that are blind or vision impaired. I mean, real, real splinter segments uh, and I can connect to those people and, and really make a one-on-one -on -one connection. So it's, it's brilliant for finding real special purpose things like that. Yeah, and it, it's true. It it's, would be great if they blew it out to actually be a medium that supported some kind of robust discussion. Yeah. Uh, but obviously it's not now, no matter right. what anybody says. It's yeah. just, you can't have a discussion on Twitter. But no. you can reach, yeah, like, like you say, you can push information out and you can pull information back in such short, uh, easily accessible bursts yeah. so quickly that I don't see it really like, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's peaked. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. It could mm -hmm. definitely be absorbed into other mediums at some point, but mm -hmm. still it does what it does 
better than anybody else has been able to uh, do better. Yeah. yeah. And what do you find the best use of it? Like, are you pushing information and taking information out, or I do everything. And I, I also find that Twitter. I, I think part of what has become the genius of Twitter. I don't know if it's what they've set out to do. I don't really care. But mm-hmm. at this point, they've basically fixed a lot of their server problems. Unless you want to tweet about the damn World Cup and it just the whole thing explodes which I don't want to do but it's kind of wrecking my Twitter right now to be honest <laughs> um, but uh, I think it, it can really be whatever you want it to be uh, if you like comedians you can have a list that's just comedians and that's you that's you can just source that and read jokes all day and it's, yeah. it make, makes you happy yeah. like you said you can treat it like a personally driven RSS reader and you can use it right. as an immediate news source yeah. that's uh, 10 steps faster than any blog and it's human. It's human edited. It's almost like a news a news feed that's edited by smart humans. You pick the smart humans, and and you know if you th- if you really love what Kevin Rose says or something, you follow Kevin Rose, and he has already he, you know assuming that you don't find an automated one, you you you, you weed it out so that you only follow the real human ones. He's read twenty things and he tweeted one, and so it's really really high quality, you know and. Plus. You can see the discussion. That's another thing that, that it, it's hard to get for people when they first get into Twitter. And when I when I help people get into Twitter, uh, you know, it's it's the it's the reaching out and replying to people is yeah. a really big component. Yeah. that seems odd at first. Yeah. But then, if you like Kevin Rose, for instance, and his opinion, the people that he's speaking with or replying to uh, about that topic, those might be people you want to absolutely, follow absolutely. Um, yeah. I got a couple Twitter like get started with Twitter uh, uh, videos that. Uh, a lot of people seem to get a kick out of, and that's that, that's one thing I really try to hammer home is it is what you make it. Yeah. You have to give it some time. Yeah. And my first uh, my first advice is to follow a hundred people. It doesn't matter. You can unfollow and follow. These are not friends. Mm-hmm. This is Facebook. This is yeah. a one to one relationship. It's an asynchronous relationship where it's you're broadcasting and you're mm-hmm. taking in information. If yeah. you unfollow somebody. No harm done. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Follow 100 people and see how it feels. Yeah. I think the most important thing is to first get a rich stream of information, and then you then it starts to be fun. I think. You know, it's so interesting too. Like you mentioned that the I I remember hearing um, or it's the people who don't understand Twitter that are trying to educate other people about Twitter that really screws things up. For example. You get somebody who's uh, who gives you some snide, snarky remark about "I'm following you. Why aren't you following me?" And because they think it's friending, it's almost like um, they think that they're on Facebook and I friended you. Why aren't you friending me? And it's yeah. like you know you're well, you're not my friend, and this is not about friends. It's not friends. It's following. So it's it's reading. I'm reading you. You know, I think actually. I'm just totally thinking out loud off the top of my head, and I just had an idea. I think one of the smartest improvements Twitter could do is to not show who you follow. I mean, in a way, it's really good because if I really love what you, what you're, you know, what you say, if I follow you, I love seeing who you follow, and that's really cool, the openness of that. But if you didn't show who someone followed, they wouldn't know if you're following them or not. Like, if I follow your RSS feed, you don't necessarily know. How many? You know, you may know how many. Like maybe they should show how many, but not who, because then people are not offended if you don't follow them. You know, like you follow who you want, and you don't have to follow someone back. It's like this. They're coming from this Facebook MySpace mentality where they think follow means friend, and it's just it's very confusing to people. It's so simple, and it's so powerful, and it has to me it has these at least three, probably like five major uses. Like I said, reading who you want to read broadcasting to the entire world because you broadcast you're not only broadcasting to your followers obviously you're broadcasting if I broadcast and talk about Ubuntu I am actually broadcasting to everybody who searches on the word Ubuntu whether they follow me or not so it's real wide a reach when you say something you're gonna get you know and anybody who's ever uh, tweeted about a product you tweet about a certain product and the company will reply to you. That's you know? what I love about and, and it. And now tweets are being seen as citizen journalism Absolutely. And, and are being picked up by journalists, bloggers, yeah. you know, online journalists, and I mean CNN, uh, the Today Show. So like what mm-hmm. you're saying, if you, if you make that 140 characters really encapsulate generally what's happening with Twitter searches to um, someone who's running a broadcast TV show, They'll pull that tweet and make it represent the people. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that's a powerful thing. Yeah, that happened well, to me. That happened, that happened to me Bruce, because my, yeah. my name was in the New York Times because of a tweet. 
and they really? showed my they showed my tweet and my name. Actually, two two different two different, two different, different things. Yeah. One was um, uh, <laughs> O M F G. A plane just crashed outside my window into the Hudson River, and okay. boom. You know, I I mean, I, you know, obviously, uh, right away, within a minute or so, I got a call from a TV station in Toronto and a newspaper in Charlotte and all that. Can I use your photo? And then. Uh, so that's one, and then the New York Times subsequently, a couple weeks later, did a story about real time, uh, real real time internet and journalism and all that, and they actually mentioned my name as one of the original tweets about that event. And another, and, yeah, right. And then another one, completely unrelated, was oh, I was tweeting about a product. Um, I, what was it? The droid. I think it was the Motorola Droid. What when it first came out, and I got it in November, and I I was saying how my, how I love typing on the Droid better than my iPhone and so on. And they, they called me, I guess it was the ad, ad agency for Motorola called me and asked if they could reproduce it. And so they did an ad, like a, a full page ad in the Washington Post and used my tweet in the ad with my permission. Oh, my <laughs> it's like, yeah, talk about reach. I mean, it's amazing. You really are. I, it really is broadcasting in a sense. It's, and it's like, it yeah. is like blog. It, it really is blogging. It's really, really short blogging. <laughs> and, uh, I got quoted a couple times. I'll give them to you right now. Um, uh, ad week quoted me in twi- Tweet Freak, and uh, I said every time I click through to a MySpace page, I feel dirty, just like I took the subway, and I really need some hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I like to think that's one of my uh, my classics. That's great. And I, I like was that. Misquoted by CNN, who uh, they didn't quote me quite right. They took they took out the word uh, I used Jesus Christ, and they took out the word Christ. I don't know. <laughs> so, but I said um, this was before the uh, iPad came out, and I said breaking. Apple tablet to feature screen made from real unicorn horn and powered by the magic holy kisses of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my! Is that true? Well, that's what it came out. It was like the, you know, people like you know, chill out for a little minute. <laughs> it's called the ISOC. No. <laughs> no, he's yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I know. I know that's I know. one thing it's I want. Main computer now. Uh, yeah, I wanted so to ask you. I know. Main computer. I know. Ed told me. Ed warned me that you're an Apple fan. <laughs> yeah, and how do you like it, by the way? I wanted to ask you. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed? absolutely obsessed yeah. with it. I love it. I'm, I, I got it. it. It's funny because, I, like I said, I'm an early adopter. I'm a like line waiter. You know, I got the droid uh, on 34th Street. I was out there at midnight. Yeah. Um, I, I get things the day they come out because I, I, at this age, I've realized that I'll be obsessed yeah. with news articles and thinking about it until I just buy the yeah. damn thing, make my own opinion. That's and these days... It. There's so many different products, and there's such a rapid rate of, of innovation. Sure, yeah, and I've learned, sure. like, you can buy the product, try it out for, for two weeks, and then give it back. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> even service contracts, I mean, I think that we're, we're completely uh, uh, constrained by this weird contract contract mentality. I'd rather tell a company like AT&T to go screw themselves, and if they're going to charge me 120 bucks, screw it. I just want to be done with it and yeah. try something fresh. You know... So, you're so absolutely I'm a big right. Fan of getting the thing on the day that it happens, and I wasn't going to do it with the iPad. I wasn't because I'm like, I don't need it. I've got plenty of stuff. But I did. I got you it did. On the day. And I absolutely love it. Yeah. Couldn't resist. Well, you know, it's interesting. These are a lot of interesting topics that I like to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about Apple because I'm not a fan. But I mean, I, I sort of am. I sort of. I'm an early adopter like you, and I, you know, trust me. You know, I. Just a little teeny background. I was in, you know, IT forever. I'm only 29, but, you know, like 30 years ago, I was uh, director of IT for a Fortune 400 company, and we had, this was before Windows, okay? Everything was IBM. The whole entire company was IBM, OS2, you know, uh, PC DOS and all that. OS2 was mainly... 29? That, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <What> do you, <laughs> all right, shut up. Anyway, so... <laughs> So anyway, I, I, <laughs> you, I, that was a math test and you passed. So anyway, uh, no, but we, I introduced the company. This is a Fortune 400 company. I was director of I, I information systems R&D, right, for this company. And I introduced them to this new thing. That I said, it, it's Microsoft Windows. And I said, this is going to take off. Trust me, people are going to be using Windows. And I was obviously right. Well, I, I like introduced it to the whole entire company, and it, it was a real battle. But I, I was an early adopter of Windows, the first one of the first Fortune 400 companies to actually adopt Windows, and we got it implemented corporate wide because of me pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, anyway, um, obviously prior to that, the first Macintosh, I had one of the very first Macintoshes off the assembly line because I worked at a Ma- at an Apple dealer, you know, 
and uh, we got an employee deal, so I got one of the very first ones ever made of the very first, before they called it the classic, the classic. So I've always been a fan of the ease of use and all that. Of course, then Windows tried to you know copy that and so on. But um, now my issues with Apple are about, now I'm a real fanatic for free open source, um, non-proprietary uh, open standards and so on. And Apple is, you know, Steve Jobs is absolutely a thousand percent opposed to that. So is AT&T. And so, you know, they make a lot more money doing it their way where you have to, you can't use it unless it, ha you can't, you have to have an Apple cable to plug into an Apple product to another Apple product and you have to buy it from the Apple store. And Steve Jobs decides what software you're allowed to run on your computer that you paid all that money for. Uh, well, not on a Mac, not on a regular Mac. There's no flash gating, there's no stopping. Right. I mean, the yeah. Mac OS is one thing and the iOS is a whole other thing. Yeah, but and they're I talking mean, about I mean, making... I mean, I mean, I, I hate to say it because I love iPhone and I hate AT&T. I had to get rid of my iPhone even though I love the product and the innovation of the iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, I love Android and I was really happy to jump, give the finger to AT&T and see where Google was at because I'm a huge Google yeah. fan as yeah. well. Interesting. Um, but I gotta say, after a year being on Android, I'm really uh, disappointed in uh, the openness should have by now engendered a much better product in the app marketplace, and it hasn't. It just hasn't. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's taking so long, but still, <laughs> you know, when you pick up an iPhone or an iPad, even if Steve Jobs is, you know, cock-blocking Flash and just forcing Objective-C development, is creating incredible, uh, frankly, a lot of rich developers, a lot of innovation, and every time I look in the app store, there is really good product, and I'm almost never disappointed. Yeah. If I yeah, pay a dollar or five dollars, which by the other one thing, Bruce, you got to think about that we've grown up with an internet and a computer culture that's used to saying like, Bruce, I like you, I'm going to give you that app, I'm going to give you that movie. Um, what the iOS has kind of given developers as a real pretty sincere gift is is it's changed the marketplace to let customers feel okay about buying software like i don't like that i can't give somebody a copy of software that i bought on the ios but i barely even think about it because they've created this purchase stream where people go okay i'll throw down three bucks for yeah. this twitter client i'll throw yeah. up nine bucks for this game it's probably going to be awesome yeah that's you can, i don't think you can totally easily dismiss that as 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 that's bad and open development is good. No, so no, I know. a lot of good stuff and a lot of quality that's being developed. In fact, the other day, I bought my first app for, <laughs> for the Android. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you okay, know, they do, sell, they do sell apps in the Android market as well. Most of, so of course, it, it, it well, makes me actually, sad. it's better than any app I ever used on the iPhone for this. It's called Tape Machine, and it's brilliant. And I'm, getting I'm in direct communication, like we email and send voice messages to each other like every other day. They get the developer in Paris who wrote this app. So they give it, I mean, he's giving amazing support to the thing. I noticed no, that- try it out, but yeah. better than any iPhone app or- Yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried, I haven't, I mean, any, any iPhone app that does this, that's your, what is that? That's the Nexus One? Yeah, I'm on Nexus One. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I went Droid to Nexus One. Droid to Nexus Droid One. Just, I, had, I think Motorola made, made a bunch of really buggy products in mm -hmm. the first run, and I got mm -hmm. really sick of it. Yeah, and now, I yeah. I like it, but it just, it just was constantly yeah. hardware and software bugs. Yeah. There's, I mean, the thing is, don't forget that iPhones have been around for three years. Right, mm -hmm. it's it's had a three year head start. Now, Droid came out in November. I mean, you you know we can't expect them to be at the same uh, place of maturity, especially in the app m market and all that. So I mean, it's but it's happening very fast. Every time I go into the market, there's a lot more um, to choose from. There's a lot more apps there. So sure. um, and just numerically, because Android will rule everything, just because the yeah. amount of carriers, the openness, yeah, uh, it will. You know, it will. Right. It is another like. Apple versus Microsoft OS right. war. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Completely different platform. It's yeah. weird. And, but, um, but and yeah, the, the apps have to get better in the app market. They will. They are, though. They are. The th yeah, and they, first of will. all, the, the, the quality of the apps is driven by the number of users. And now they said Google, well, back at Google I.O. a few months ago or something, they said that they were, what was it, 100, no, uh, was it 100? Yeah, 100,000 new Android activations per day. You know, they're talking about, well, they're projecting that they might sell, you know, 10 million iPhone 4s, but 
hello, it's already, that's the future maybe, but the Android is activating 100,000 per day today, now, and the other thing is that the whole entire smartphone market is ex is exponentially, it's just exploding. So the numbers are a little bit misleading because all and all smartphone sales are going up, 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 up. Right now it's something like, what, what did we read, 17% of the phones are actually smartphones. So like the vast majority of phones are still basic cell phones. But you though, as those- being on a dumb phone now? I can't no, imagine. I know. <laughs> well, that's because we're so sophisticated. But the thing is that more, normal people in Ohio, <laughs> and I'm from Ohio, I can say that, I'm from Ohio. But normal people just use the phone for a phone. And, but as those die, when their batteries wear out and it's cheaper to get a new one and all that stuff, oh, they they're all being replaced by, be yeah, they're, it's not even gonna be an option. Like the only phones we carry are smartphones. They're all Android. And by and the way, you know, talk about openness, do you realize that Android is Linux? You realize that, right? Because nobody calls it Linux. I try, when I tweet, I always say Android Linux. It's Linux. TiVo is Linux. Android is Linux. You know, Google, everything Google is Linux. Inside and outside the corporation, every Google service, Google search, Google maps, Google, everything, Gmail, everything they do is Linux. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that people understand Ubuntu is Linux and Ubuntu is far easier to use and has much better hardware driver support and so on, easier to install and all that than Windows or Mac, any version ever has been. And we use them all. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, I'm going to have to have you over so I can demonstrate it to you. Yeah. But Linux, <laughs> Linux rules. And this, is the, this really is a classic war between closed and open because there is no operating system more closed than iOS. And there's no operating system more open than Linux, so it's really interesting to me to watch the two battle. The uh, now you talk about Mac, you know, um, there's talk, there's rumor that you know Steve Jobs wants to make a basically an iOS. You know the difference between OS, OS X. OS X is Linux too. I mean, don't forget. Well, no, it's BSD. Unix, yeah. It's from a way back. Yeah, it's a branch way way back early on when they had a license that allowed Apple to completely. I won't say steal. I'll say completely take it and call it Apple and close it and say no. And if you use my Apple operating system, I'm gonna sue you out of business. And that's exactly what Apple's done. They took something that they didn't create, they called it Apple, and then, and now, and now it's evolved, they've evolved it themselves. They took FreeBSD, called it Apple, kept, you know, they, they've improved it and changed it and modified it themselves, but, uh, which is not necessarily good, but whatever, and then, if you use it on hardware you bought from somebody else, I'm gonna sue you out of business. And that's what they've done. So it's completely closed, almost as if they had written it themselves. But they uh, haven't. <laughs> the OS and all of the thousands and thousands of work by Apple developers, that's not, not, not everything is free. If you wanna use Ubuntu, use it. You know, mm -hmm. I completely disagree that it's the easiest and has the best driver support. I can't believe you, you could say that, but I don't wanna get into that. Yeah. But my <laughs> life, is sourced. I used to be a Windows guy. I gave up on Mac for four years when XP came out. I thought XP was a superior product. I thought <laughs> OS X was a joke. All of a sudden, I couldn't print. The, the OS went to shit. And can we swear on this? I yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's internet. Okay, cool. <laughs> you can do um, porn if you want. And, uh, <laughs> I became an actual like PC pundit, and I was against the Mac. I thought the Mac had jumped the shark. But uh, I, after four years of it, I, I came back because it just... To me, yeah. it's not pretty pictures and marketing. It's about actively trying to get to a task, doing it cleanly, having the OS be relatively invisible, and not messing with DLL errors. Yeah. And trying to like negotiate my hardware and software. Um, you know, like it, it's there's a certain grace that you get in the yeah. back experience that it's is true. duplicated nowhere. It's, it's true. It's true. No, but and the reason the reason is I think he's he, he's he does, he's not saying that like the iPad. He's not from the get go. It wasn't like this is an open computing platform. No, <laughs> it couldn't be more closed. It doesn't even have a USB port. Exactly. Yeah, See, so it shouldn't expect it to be. I wish I didn't have to loop in with an Apple cable and go through iTunes to update things yeah. that I can't do over the air. Yeah. I love Google's uh, cloud method with Android of updating things. I think it's much quicker, smarter, and, yeah. and the way everything will be. But I can't deny at how rock solid yeah. this machine and the, and the sim symbiotic relationship yes. with the hardware inside. Yeah, the hardware inside. That's right. And now, but the, the, see, the thing is, <laughs> the reason that it's stable and it, and it works really well with the hardware is because it's only made for that one hardware and that one software. They're made for each other. 
and so a you do thing? that's well it's not necessarily a bad thing right but um, it the nature of the fact that the software is written for the hardware and the hardware is designed for the software and they're they're designed by the same company and they're you're completely locked in it's true you don't have to think about it it just works you turn it on and it works and there's no messing with it everything now, shouldn't be like that we well, should have open and we should have experiences like that mm -hmm. i think everybody can come to the party i don't see i don't see android and ios at war because you know apple's really trying to do this one experience and they've kept on this horrible horrible service AT&T um, if they opened it up things would really open up yeah um, there's room for everybody I mean I think the worst thing for yeah. development and for uh, moving forward as internet culture has been has been that like Microsoft was really the one thing on the block for a really long time right. everybody you know there needs to be an Apple there needs to be a Linux yeah. there needs to be a Microsoft see the so thing is compete. the nature of the hardware software lock-in thing is like for example I I could I could start a company and uh, call it the Bruce Computer, right? And I could say, now you you get the choice of model the black model or the or the blue model. That's it. That's it. And you have to buy this hardware, and then I put Windows on it, or it could be Linux. It could be anything. But I I put this software on this computer, and that's it. You get the the black one or the blue one. That's it. And it's gonna work absolutely 100% flawlessly. So it's really not because the operating system's better or the technology is better or the hardware is better. It's because it's by this simple fact that I lock you into this hardware and this software, I can make it work and say I only sell this hardware with this software and if you use anything else, you voided your service contract. You know, I mean if I could do that with any technology, it's not because it's a it's superior hardware or superior software. It's not. So in fact, I kind of have done that that's with simple, though. I don't think it's that simple. I see what you're saying, but that's I think it's one component of what makes something easy to use. Uh, but you know, it, it's the, the the energy they put into the into the design of the product. Yeah. Isn't just you know, it's not just pretty glass. It's you know the the new iPhone four. I haven't used one, but that metal rim around the iPhone four that's <laughs> actually the antenna. Yeah. Uh, and, and you talk about Apple just having a reputation for just using proprietary cables and if, if a cable breaks you have to go to the damn Apple store and you have to pay 29 bucks and get this thing true that's bullshit but they also have they are the company that pushes the consumer to change their mind about what they're using and that's yeah. really helped the industry I mean they they were the first ones to mass market USB uh, USB it used to be serial ports serial ports were a pain in the ass mm -hmm. they just didn't work they're clumsy yeah you could get them everywhere but Apple forced that to happen. They forced the 3.5 inch floppy disk in the first Mac, yeah. and then they killed it with the iMac in 1998. So, yeah. I mean, they, they've done a lot of things that seem crazy, but they pushed that thing in the marketplace because they thought that that would inevitably be uh, the long move. And, yeah. and a lot of times that's been right. Yeah. And that's a risky thing for a company to do. And, and I think that that appetite for risk the, the, the beauty of the design, I think, really like matches uh, uh, a lot of the elegance of the software design. I give their mm -hmm. software writers you know, huge yeah. amounts of credit. Yeah. So I, I would just, I'm not saying that everything they do is great. No, I know. I, You're, I, I, I do, do, I do say, give you that. They, the point of, of it just being that they close the hardware and the OS to a certain type of development, that that's the one ingredient to the ease of use of Apple. That's no, no, that's that. the that's the ingredient for the stability of it, for the driver support and all that. There's absolutely never going to be a driver issue when you plug Apple software into Apple hardware. It's it's made for that. So that's why there's no. Uh, that's why they have the stability that they do. And of course, it still does crash and it still does get viruses. But it's much much more stable than Windows. No, maybe not. But they it is much more stable than Windows, and it does get a lot fewer viruses than Windows. But I've never on the had other a hand, virus, and I've never had virus software. And, and I've been on Mac for 15 years. How do you know you've never had a virus if you don't have virus, antivirus software? That's the thing. People say, well, my antivirus software told me I don't have a virus. And I say, well, maybe that's because your antivirus software didn't find the virus. You know, it's a, how do you know you got good antivirus? So anyway, that's another issue. But, the, other, but the, the design, the design and ease of use, now that's a different matter. And I do credit Apple for that. Apple has, um, and, and, but, I, but I have to lose a little bit on the risk taking. I don't think it's a big risk. When you have locked people in, you've completely locked them into your hardware, your software, your platform, and you have a fan base 
then you can take any risk you want. You can say, guess what? We're going to the new four pin, whatever. We're going to go to the new wireless standard. It's that Apple only standard. You can change all the standards, all the rules anytime you want because they're going to be buying your hardware, your software. They're locked in. I, I, I think you're underestimating the intelligence of consumers. They're not fish. I mean, Apple almost went out of business as long as I've been alive until the past few years. Since the, since the iMac came back out in 98 and they started doing this, for a long time they were doing this. Yeah. But if people don't want to, and plus Apple's charging a premium cost too. If mm -hmm. people don't want to spend the money or have the experience, they'll, Apple fanboys will get old and get gray hair and die away and they'll yeah. buy this amount of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and they just won't have any new users. You know, kids going to college, kids having their first computing experience. All that will be Windows or Linux or something else unless mm -hmm. Apple was doing something right. Yeah. And right now they're, I think, clearly doing something right. Oh, well, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. most positive thing I can say about Apple is mm -hmm. that be, because of their business model, they uh, have been able to and they continue to make uh, huge advances in... Um, what I would call disruptive technology. They, they complete game changers. Like when they came out with the iPhone, that was a complete change. To have a whole touch screen interface and all that stuff, that completely changed all phones. When, when the Mac came out, the Mac at first Macintosh, the mouse can, changed everything. The, the iPhone changed everything as far as interfaces go. And um, I don't know, the iPad maybe a little bit. I mean, there's always been tablets, but you know, they, they may be changing what people expect. But they kind of like are the cutting edge of new change. Like you say, you know, the new iPhone where it uses the case as an antenna. Obviously, every phone will be doing that if they're not already, if it's better, if it if turns it out works. to be better. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a if it works. So they're, they're on the cutting edge, but um, everybody else follows then with open standards behind them. And that makes it afford. It really changes everything because you won't be able... You know, you'll be able to go and get a phone for $29 and you won't have a choice. It's going to be almost exactly the same as the iPhone 4 in a year, you know. So it, it really, they're on the cutting edge. And you, yeah, you're right. You pay a huge premium because uh, they're on the cutting edge. You've paid for that it's development. That huge. You know, it's 199 for an iPhone and it's 199 for Android X at the moment. Yeah, I have you. Well, I'm obviously I haven't joined in this conversation because I'm not that <laughs> I'm not that technical. <laughs> but I have you both beat because I got the new Evo, so I yeah. feel good Ooh, um, I among you. <laughs> yeah, come on over and you can play with it. It's amazing. 720p video camera, HDMI out. It's got an HDMI port to plug it right into your flat screen TV. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, no, it's not incredible. It's beyond the incredible. <laughs> And I, I generally like Sprint as a company too. I really don't like hardly any of the of the of the servers of the services, but uh, I think Sprint's pretty good. I like them. I got one of those Wi-Fi's, the uh, my fi's though, yeah. for yeah. the iPad, and yeah. I, I, it didn't work for me. I had to take it really? back. This one, you know, it has you know the the new version of Android that comes on the Evo. It's called Froyo. It has the MiFi built into the so the operating system. I thought that yeah, I've got Froyo on my Nexus, and yeah. I tethered to the to the iPad and. Frankly, it's my mobile solution now. I mean, yeah. I can set up in a in a deli with with nice. Froyo. Yeah. I don't pay anybody any extra money. There you go. It doesn't cost me an extra twenty bucks. But please may that stay. <laughs> great so far. Yeah. Is is Froyo on the Evo? I didn't yes. think it was on there yet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, but the, you can't use it until they get uh, 4G in New York, which will be at the end of the summer. Like I can't use the tethering, in other words, until the 4G comes along because it's structured that way or something. No, you can you can use tethering. You have to use tethering an app. Like you use an app for your tethering, right? You no, it's it's uh, built in. You're using the for you. Okay, yeah, we're st we're still figuring out the settings, but it has tethering and it also has MiFi and it's built into Froyo. There's so the tethering is is I don't know if that's Froyo. Are you sure it is? Well, I think so. It's Take in there. If, if it's got look at the, the um Oh, what's the what's the See, this is the other part of Android that's really frustrating is different versions of Android it's yeah. so confusing every phone has a new, new God, version it's like I used to have a grip on it and I just gave up it's just amazing yeah, yeah. Uh, but then um, also what each so this was the way this is you know a Google experience obviously but mm -hmm. this is when you see your app your app tray and your yeah. phone and that, uh -huh. that's Froyo, at least for me. But I think that the Evo runs, it runs Sense Well, UI, it has so Sense UI, right. But it's still, it's Sense UI on top of Froyo. The Sense UI is just an, like a, an additional user interface thing on the, like a different home screen, like front end. It's, a, it's just a UI, but, the, but it's Froyo underneath. 
And it does have, it has the, the MiFi. Now the MiFi th feature Sprint, see there's also the network factor and Sprint says, no, you can't use MiFi unless you have 4G and we don't have 4G in New York City yet, but we will by the end of summer. Um, and you have to pay $30. And, it's, and they're charging $30 extra. That's a bummer. Unless yeah. you jailbreak it, you know, you can, it's open, so you, it couldn't be any easier to, uh, you know, to, they, these guys are already hacking all that stuff. So there's and also there's an app. There's something called in the in the Android marketplace called uh, Free Tether Lite or Tether Free or something like that that people say works great. But you know, so there's many ways to do it, and it depends on the version of Android. I'm running a search. I don't mean to be contrary, but um, I don't think it's 2.2 yet because uh, I, I really? see I follow a lot of Android mm -hmm. forums and a lot. Uh, it seems people are really pissed off that that. I mean, 2.2, to be honest, isn't even on the Nexus yet. I just downloaded an early build and put it on myself. So it's mm. actually not even commercially released to the Nexus yet. Really? Uh, yeah. M mine is like a, you know, kind of relatively early build. I don't Easy. think that the Evo is 2.2 yet. We're such tech geeks, we have to actually look. Okay, I've got it right here. Sorry, I'm and not trying to be contrary. No, I mean, it's okay. It's interesting. We were it's all kind of like really waiting for the final, the final 2.2. We should know this. Let's see. About, about system... And then software, software information. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then two point one update one. There you go. So yeah, two point one. It's, it's still that's um, not for you. That's uh, not for you. Two point two. It's for you, right? Yeah. Right. Oh. Well, it does have MiFi. It has Sprint MiFi and it has tethering built in. Yeah, so it that, must be. A, I think that's a thing specifically with Sprint oh. and Evo. That it's ah. a separate. That's. I think that's why they charge the money because it's something that they had to pay the money to. Embed mm. in maybe it's some kind of variation of not sense UI, but some kind of proprietary Sprint HTC software that's making the tethering possible. Okay. Um, but you know this one's just kind of built into the OS, and, and when that goes to 2.2, I'm really curious what Sprint's going to do because they're going to have customers who are going to say, "Whoa, why are we paying 20, 30 bucks for tethering?" And we just flip the switch for Froyo, yeah. and other people on Froyo get to tether for free. Yeah. What are you doing so, I'm curious how they're going to play that. They're gonna have to make it free, or else they're gonna have to, or else people are just gonna have a backdoor. There's gonna be an app you download to bypass Sprint or something. There's or gonna they, have they, to be. They, or they'll cock block it so that you can only, uh, if you want to pay the money, you can only tether with 4G, which is pretty valuable. And I can mm -hmm. see a lot of customers wanting to pay for that because 4G is supposed to be super sick yeah. fast when it happens. Yeah, and well, we it, we already are paying for 4G, even though it's not available here. You don't have an option. You have to pay that. It's, when you have an Evo, you, you pay for 4G, $10 extra on your rate plan, even though it's not available in New York. How's the battery on that? Because the screen looks so beautiful and bright. Yeah. I'm curious, yeah. how's the battery? It's, I would say that's the biggest downfall, personally. Uh, I've had it for a little bit over a week, and yeah, I'm already shopping for a new battery because I can't go too far without it just completely draining well and it, but you know to me everybody talks about battery life but to me it's the least important issue to me you know why because what i do i never ever buy a phone well first of all i never buy an iphone anymore so um i never buy a phone that doesn't have a removable battery and i never buy a phone without buying two extra batteries and a battery only charger so i always have a battery on the charger i always have a full battery in my left pocket and then there's a battery in the phone so it never ever ever goes out. I mean, if, if I, you know, swap the battery with the one in my left pocket, then I have a whole other day's use. It's crazy. You know, and I put the dead battery in my right pocket. And then as soon as I get home, I take the battery off the charger, put it in my left pocket and cycle the three. I'm going to go, I'm going to go run to a power sock and I'll bring you back what I use. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A power Yeah, rock. I thought oh, power a rock. power, some power supplier. <laughs> I thought that we had Froyo, but I guess you're right. It's not. Yeah. 2.1 is not well, Froyo. I probably told you I that. Because I tweeted it about that, saying that it's Froyo. Because <laughs> I told you that, and I was mistaken. Oh, okay. See? I do make mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Somebody must have told Sorry me that. that. That's how rumors start. Oh, it's we, no problem. I, all this time, I thought we were on Froyo with that. Anyway. Um, I, I got a little thing at the airport, which I love. Uh, it's, it's called an iGo. It's just a little box. Oh, the it's battery back. Yeah. It's a charger. Yeah. Use as a charger for your phone, but you can disconnect the USB card. And like when you're in an airport, for instance, it sucks to have to charge your phone and stand there like a douche. Just, yeah. Hey, I'm charging my phone. It's a little box, and you can just plug it in a wall and go do your stuff, or you know, go and buy a magazine. 
and then come back to the power socket and then pull it out and it's got a full charge. I keep one of those in my pack all the time. Mm -hmm. The neat thing is it's you can put any kind of cord there. So I have a cord nice. for iPhones for the mm -hmm. for the lady. I can charge her phone up. If somebody a lot of times people are like, damn, I'm out of juice, and I'm like, whoa, what kind of phone you got? And boom, I can just hook them up to my thing, which is nice. kinda it's kinda neat, uh, the modular charger. That is nice. You plug it in the wall, go buy a magazine, come back and hope it's still there. <laughs> well I but, think people are afraid it's like an explosive device. Oh right, right. They're gonna call nine one one. There's something suspicious in this outlet. But, you know, Ed, we got um, a company called Mophie sent uh, the, the battery. It was, it's a battery backup pack specifically for iPhone, though. It doesn't work with anything else. And, you, and in fact, there's a different model for each iPhone. But you slide the iPhone right into it, and it's, it's, like, a, it's like a really thick case for the iPhone, and it's a battery backup, too. So th that works really well, too. Well, when, when we were both on iPhone, we couldn't walk out. Of, I mean, my iPhone, it, the battery only lasted a year because I'm, you know, a an, an crazy obsessive user of these things. So the battery didn't last long. And so, of course, when the battery do dies, the whole phone has to go in the d trash dumpster because the battery costs the same to replace the battery as to buy a new phone of the same model. So that's why... I always say Apple's the least green company of all the electronics companies because the, when, the, when the battery wears out, the whole computer, and the iPhone is a handheld computer, goes in the trash dumpster. I mean, Sadly. I've swapped batteries before because Apple batteries are historically crappy. I yeah. mean, like, I, I, that's, that's one of my big complaints with them globally as a company is, is their battery, the quality of their batteries is, is terrible. Mm -hmm. I've had to take a lot of laptops back. I've had to take a, a lot of, uh, you know, iPods, iPhones back. But, um, but they typically swap the battery. You know, you have to go to a Genius Bar, which sucks, or you have to send it to Apple, which I agree sucks. Yeah, but aren't they charging the $99? When I had it, they told me it was $99. They'd send it, factory, they'd send it to the factory to change the battery, and they were going to charge me $99. Or you could buy a new iPhone of the same model for $99. <laughs> huh. Either way, you want a new iPhone or a new battery? You know, it's like, that's not a choice. Mm -hmm. That's a throw it in the dumpster. So then the, what it becomes, I call it an AC cell phone. It only runs on AC power with a six-inch cord. And so I had, to, <laughs> I had to keep the iPhone plugged into an extent, a lamp extension cord, you know, a six-foot extension cord, so that I could have power, and then I could use it as a remote control for my boxy on the sofa. But that's pretty much the only use of the iPhone. I used to take pictures of Bruce, like, sitting at Macy's or something, by <laughs> huddled down, squatted down next to an outlet. A charge a power PS outlet phone. <laughs> yeah because i had to make one more text or one more phone call so i'd be squatting on the floor with the you know that stupid cord is like freaking eight inches long yeah. you know so i'd have to like be literally <laughs> sitting on the floor with the phone plugged in to make a call or whatever oh my god anyway we're almost out of time here but i, I wanted to ask you really quick since you're in new york uh what are some of your favorite things to do in new york since you're from the west coast and there's so many great things in new york like yeah. as far as like what do you where do you like to hang out or eat or it doesn't um, matter I live what in the East Village. Uh, I love I love the East Village and I, I, I do most of my kind of foot traffic around here. And a lot of the agencies that I, I work for luckily are down here. I don't have to go to Midtown too much for work. Even though I, I dig Midtown. I love all of New York. Um, there's a lot of Brooklyn I don't give a crap about. <laughs> <laughs> really overrated. Brooklyn thanks you. <laughs> um, and then um, but I'd say, you know, it, it, it's hard to uh, it's hard to oversell the food here. It's yeah, amazing. You know, yeah. A lot of like food exploration, uh, a lot of looking for bars. Uh, a lot of my favorite stuff um, that I've done in New York, uh, it's kind of a boring answer, but occurs from just waking up on a Sunday and deciding to walk in a certain direction, and boom, there's a street fair or there's a demonstration happening in Union Square, or you decide to you know walk up to Central Park, and that's like a, a frigging movie every time you walk through it totally um, yeah. it, it's it's there's just i used to think you know when i lived in ohio and i i had a lot of friends who lived in new york and i used to think they were they were so damn arrogant they all they talk about is new york new york new york new york is better at everything but the fact is that it really is the most amazing place to be and it's not just because i live here it really is like walking out the door it's like people people take a weekend vacation to new york and i told him i said we just walk out our front door and we're we're on a vacation in New York. We're in That's New York true. City. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, let me ask you, like, you guys live around uh, Central Park? Yes. Yes, we're like now, eight is minutes. This, is this your view? Oh, that's it. That's, 
Yeah, that's, very similar. That's well, actually not our view. That's a friend of ours who lives right there in Columbus Circle. Yeah. Absolutely. We're out of time. We got to pick up tomorrow. We'll pick. We'll, we'll pick up tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but sometime soon. Monday maybe. We got to pick up and have more conversation. But we're out of time. We've got sixty seconds left. <laughs> But anyway, it was great fun chatting. Yeah, it was a good time. All right, yeah, we'll thanks do this for again joining really us. Soon. Yeah, we'd like to get together sometime. I'll, you know, when we're in New York. <laughs> when we're in New York, it looks nice. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Great. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> Take care, man.